All right, here we're going to look at equivalent systems. And what we mean by equivalent systems is we're looking at a force and couple system. And what we're doing is we're actually reducing it and replacing it uh, with a system that simply has one force and one couple moment, okay, that produces the exact same external effects as um, the original system, okay? And what I mean by exact same external effects is any... Um, reaction forces would be the same regardless of which system you have on there. Okay, So what we essentially are trying to do is we're trying to move forces and couples to a specific point. So I just have one force and one couple. Now, I can move a force only if I add a couple to essentially balance uh, that force. So for example, if I have a, a straight member here with a force at the end of it, and let's say I want to move it over to where the hand is. Okay, At the hand, I can place a downward force and an upward force Okay, with no change in the system right? as far as the total force going. They, they cancel each other out. Right? So this negative F cancels with that F, and I'm just left with this F. However, I've created this couple moment right, of D uh, between these two Fs. Okay, so I need to, I can replace those, or that couple moment with just a couple moment M here, uh, F times D. Okay, so if I move a force, I have to add a couple moment uh, of the distance away from that force times the force to, uh, to make the system the same. Okay, so all three of these systems are equivalent to one another. They have the same external effects uh, as one system. Okay. Now, if I have a couple moment uh, on my system, I can move that around as I want to. It's a free vector. We've talked about that many times in the past. So I just can move that willy-nilly wherever I need to move it to. So for a general system that I want to reduce uh, several forces and moments down to a single force and a single couple moment at a specific point, Okay, which is the system I have up here. I've got two forces at various locations and a couple moment. Okay, so if I want to move both forces to point O, so I have F1 and F2 at those forces, okay, the magnitude of the forces don't change. They just create a moment. I have to add a moment to balance that as I move the force. But the forces, the magnitude of those forces remain just the same. Okay, so my resultant force at point O is just simply the sum of all the forces acting on the body. Okay. Now, the moment that I'm creating at point O is a combination of my couple moment M here. I move that, and that's a free vector. I can just add that in, so it's the sum of any couple moments plus the sum of any R cross Fs, which I have two here, right, because I moved F1 and F2 to point O, so uh, the moment of one is R1 cross F1, and the moment of two is R2 cross F2. And what I'm left with is a single um, point with a single force and a single couple moment. And again, that resultant force is, is just the sum of all the forces acting on the original system. And this couple moment is just the sum of all the moments, which include both the couple moments and all the moments created when moving the force from its point to the new location. So that's how I can create an equivalent system with a uh, single force and a single moment. Now, I can take this a step further down to one single force. And I can do this only in the condition where my resultant force and resultant couple uh, are perpendicular to one another. And there are two cases where this occurs. The first one being a coplanar system where all my forces are in the same plane, such as I have here. I've got four forces. They're all in the XY system. Okay, I move those to point O, so I just sum up those forces, but each one of those forces creates a moment as I move it. Okay, but that moment is all in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction, the K direction. Okay, so that moment is coming out of the screen. Okay, the force is in line with the screen, so they're perpendicular to one another. Okay, so we do that just like we did before. Now, I can actually balance this moment by just sliding this force over some distance to create the exact same moment, which is what I have here. It is at some distance d away, okay? And I find that d by just crossing 
that D with my resultant force and set that equal to what I found as my resultant moment when I moved everything to 0.0. Okay? The other type of system that we can reduce down to a single force at a specific location are parallel force systems, where all of the forces are acting in the same direction, like I have down here. Every All the forces are acting in the Z direction. Okay? Now, moving all these forces to point zero, I just sum up all those forces, get my resultant force. In moving those, I create a moment. But now that moment is going to be on this plane. So again, my force and my moment resultants are perpendicular to one another. So I can then move my force some distance so that it creates a moment equivalent to my resultant moment. And I can calculate just the same way. I set that resultant moment that I calculated when moving everything to point O. I set that equal to some unknown R vector, D vector, crossed with my resultant force that I have there. Okay, so that uh, is how I can reduce things down to a single force. And this parallel force system is uh, we will look at again when we talk about centers of gravity uh, in the uh, a little bit later.